Now when most people think about the best female MCs of all time, many names come up. Little Kim, Missy Elliott, Nicki Minaj, the ever iconic Lauren Hill, and so on. But one name that consistently shows up in hip hop conversations is none other than the troublesome Foxy Brown. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Foxy Brown was born around 1978. She grew up in Brooklyn and kick-started her rap career at an incredibly early age. Around 1994, before she turned 16 years old, she won a talent contest and was invited on stage to freestyle. Luckily for her, within the audience were Tone and Poke, producers who were working at the time on LL Cool J's 1995 album, Mr. Smith. I'm going to the top, leave a smoke in my trail. Bitch ass gangsters put that ass on sale. They were so impressed with her performance that they invited her to rap over Cool J's I Shot Ya beat. The track masters were impressed enough with her verse they added it to the remix without even informing LL, who upon hearing the final remix version, initially thought it was performed by a young boy. Get them niggas for they shut up, fuck it. Gucci sweaters and Lomani lovers. Cool J was mightily impressed when he was informed that it was in fact Foxy Brown and decided to keep her verse, which was so successful that it led to her featuring on multiple other gold and platinum certified singles, including a remix of You're Making Me High by Tony Braxton, Touch Me, Tease Me with Case, and Ain't No with Jay Z. Foxy's sudden and instant success with the singles led to a major label bidding war over her around 1996, which was won by Def Jam in the same year when she was only 17 years old. Um, basically those remixes were stepping stones, like just to lead up to the album and I mean, there couldn't have been, there couldn't, it, it couldn't be a better process to me. Like, you know what I mean? It was, that was just like the perfect setup for me to be introduced to the industry, to bring something different. And that's what we chose. And then ultimately, after remixes and a lot of attention, there becomes a bidding war. Mm -hmm. People want you, people are uh, bugging you, offering you all kinds of stuff. We decided to, to go with Def Jam. Um, what primarily made that decision happen for you? Being on the I Shot to track, you know, and for L even putting me on, getting me recognized, I thought that I owed something to him. And, you know, I just wanted to be where he was. So, and it was more like a family environment over there at Def Jam. After signing, Brown dropped her debut album, Il Nana, to resounding success. In its first week, the album sold over 128,000 copies and was certified platinum within three months, picking at number seven on the Billboard 200. It broke down barriers for women everywhere when it became the first female rap album to chart within the top 10 of the Billboard 200. Her success spread farther than America, earning her several certifications out of the country and cementing her as an artist that would go down in history. The album was preceded and followed by three singles, namely Get Me Home, I'll Be and Big Bad Mama, all of which did well on the charts. I'll Be was undeniably the star of the album. It featured Jay-Z and picked at number 7 on the Hot 100. Now this is what I wanted. Last time I talked, you were really anxious and excited about getting your album done. Uh -huh. How's it feel now to have done. it done? It feels like, oh man, it's the best thing in the world. Right. It's done. You happy? Yeah. I'm, I'm know, satisfied with it. I, I mm -hmm. wish I had a, a little more input in the album, you know, toward the album, whatever, but it's, it's, it's cool, it's cool, it's me. It's, it's a lot that I wanted to say, you know what I mean, yeah. I don't know, it's, it's a little nickname, the Nas gave me, nah, nah, and I just threw ill in front of it, that's all. Oh, all right. right, I'm saying, because you know what people think. I know, I know, it's all good, though. I mean, Nana could be anything, though. Nana, oh, okay. could, be, Nana could be anything, you want Nana. to Nana. So, thanks for the Nana. Dude. That's my biggest trait. Following the mega success of Eo Nana, Foxy Brown was inducted into the rap supergroup The Firm alongside Nas, AZ, and Cormega. The original lineup first featured on Nas's 1996 album, 
it was written for the track Affirmative Action, which is what initially led to the group's formation. In the black Camaro, firm deep, all my niggas heal the black sparrow. However, following artistic differences between Nas and Cormega, the latter was replaced by Nature prior to recording the album. The final project, released around 1997, was called The Album, and its production was handled mainly by Dr. Dre and the Trackmasters. You know, the, the album was preceded by the single From Biz and followed by their signature group single Phone Tap. The project debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and sold about 147,000 copies in the first week and went on to sell about 900,000 copies in the US. Like, I just don't want to be bothered. I want everybody around me to not have heard that CD before. Like, everybody this is new to us, let's listen, let's see what it got to offer. Mm -hmm. We're there for each other. Like, when he's doing his now, we always with him every day in the studio. Right. So it's just like we doing a firm album. After tasting the success of her number one album with The Firm, Foxy was determined to replicate the act with her sophomore album and immediately got to work. Her next offering was titled China Doll and was released around 1999. China Doll not only matched the success of Il Nana, it far superseded it, landing at number one on the Billboard 200 and going platinum just two months later. It continued to earn her international success. China Doll spawned three singles, namely Hotspot, I Can't, and J-O-B. But despite the instant success of the album as a whole, only Hotspot charted, and it was in the low 90s. Welcome back to the MTV Jams Countdown. I told you. And it's definite in the house. Foxy Brown representing with Tyrese and DJ Scribble on the Jams Countdown. Album cover right here, selling off the hook. Debuted at number one on both. Come on, give us some details about the charts. Come on. Okay, we get yeah, we debuted at number one on both R&B and pop charts, and we're the second female in history to ever do that besides Lauren Hill. For sure. Following her three album success streak. Foxy Brown took a short hiatus around 2000, but returned with another killer album around 2001 called Broken Silence. The album was led by its single All oh Yeah and its B-side counterpart BK Anthem, later followed by the hit single Candy. Yo, now let me paint y'all a picture. Fox Pimpar, just quiet like a whisper. The album as a whole performed incredibly well, but wasn't as successful as her first and second albums. The album debuted at number 5 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 130,000 copies in the first week. So what, what kind of points do you think you're going to come across in your album? Like, what are you touching on? What topic? It's, it's real. It's different. It's Broken Silence is really different. Um, I have a lot of Caribbean records on here. My family is from Trinidad. Big up Trinidad. Hey, <laughs> Doing it well, boxing. too. My family is from Trinidad, so I have to represent. There's not, um, I think, with the exception of Peppa and myself, there we are the only two female rappers who have West Indian parentage. So, okay. you know, I definitely. Then I have yeah, BK Brooklyn. Anthem for the. Yeah, for the. Yeah, Brooklyn. <laughs> BK Doing Anthem. Doing it with that one. You know, so it's, it's, it's real, you know. You know, I've always been just low key, but it's, it's definitely. In the same year, she appeared in the Rush Hour 2 soundtrack, so things were looking pretty good for Foxy Brown at this moment. Unfortunately for Foxy Brown, this would be the height of her success and she began going downhill almost immediately after this. This stemmed in part from her feud with Little Kim and in part from her attitude towards her superiors. After selling more than 16 million albums worldwide and earning multi-platinum status at the tender age of 18, Foxy Brown had grown into a bit of a diva and began to gain a reputation as being difficult to work with. The issues with her label started around 2003. I think coming in the game at 15, I got signed at 15 years old and knowing what I wanted and being outspoken and being intelligent and articulating everything I wanted, they didn't like that from the beginning. So it was never, I never felt like I had the Def Jam support. Like you would see uh, the team out and no Foxy pictures. And I'm like, 
what's up? Like it just always, you can go on Def Jam and there's pictures of the, like the smallest artist on their label and there's no Foxy Brown pictures. There's no Foxy Brown posters, promo. And it, it got to a point where it was obvious that they didn't want me there either. Okay. Did you ever invest your money in yourself? Last time you were here, you told me about a billboard right. that you invested oh, you know, I did everything. Your, I shot, in, in promoting yourself. Let me tell then. you one better. Def Jamaica is my idea. I'm suing them for that. I was going to say, now you have nothing yeah, to do I'm with suing, it. I'm suing. I chose. I'm going to tell you what happened. So Capitalize you're suing them. How much are you suing them for? An undisclosed amount. Yeah. Okay. But I'm not. It, it's a lot of things. I'm not just suing them for that. For money. I've never received a royalty check. Not one ever in my whole career of rapping. And I've sold a lot of records over there, and I've never received one. Jeez. When I when Although I Although somebody was just here the other day, Montel mm -hmm. Jordan, who said that artists oh, yeah. very rarely receive royalty checks unless they well, are selling like about eight Montel, but or or ten million cops. I mean, he said you well, know. What you I did is I hired an independent auditor. Okay. And we went back in, and they found that whatever was done initially in my contract was unbelievably low. Like I had like a thousandth of a penny. You were fifteen <laughs> when you signed, yeah. Right, but you expect. I mean, you expect the people who are hands on your careers to leave you in the right 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 path despite already releasing a single titled styling for the new album the previous year il na na 2 was shelved and the album was never released foxy brown managed to get her wish of departing from def jam and went solo around 2004 she began working on her new fourth album to be titled black roses and announced that she would be the first artist signed to jay-z's new label s carter records unfortunately Instead of focusing on the label, Jay was appointed the president of Def Jam Recordings and S. Carter Records was dissolved completely. Foxy then confirmed that Black Roses would be released under Def Jam and explained the meaning behind the name. My best friend Barrington Levy has a song called Black Roses. He's been traveling all over the world and never seen a black rose in no other garden. When he found his black rose, he knew that shit was special. Y'all can have all the female rappers in the world, but there's only one black rose. I feel that's me. Unfortunately, around 2005, Foxy Brown's aunt passed away, seemingly resulting in hearing loss. I'm thinking, God would never do this. This can never happen to me. The morning of the funeral, I woke up and I couldn't hear anything. Not the TV, not my car horn, not the dial tone on the phone. Of course, I still had to go to the funeral. I sat in the front row and I couldn't hear the choir. She elaborated further in another interview. I ran outside to my truck and honked the horn. Nothing. I ran back inside and dialed a number on the phone. Then I started breaking down in tears and screaming and I couldn't even hear myself scream. That's when I knew there was a problem. Special guest in the studio. We got Foxy Brown in here. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Brooklyn, baby. What's up, y'all? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so, Foxy, you haven't been out in a long time. Six years. Six years. Yeah. That's a long time. Which is bit, which is a blessing. Well, which is a blessing because to be able to still rock, be right. able to still be out here and still be at the forefront and the top of my game without a record in the marketplace in six years is, right. is, is really a blessing to me. So what's the situation like with Def Jam right now? Well, I'm there. You know what I mean? I'm there. The album is crazy. Black Roses is retarded. Right. And, and, and and to me, I feel like when I embarked in a career 10 years ago, I built a global brand right. that supersedes music so that my relevancy is just never tied to music. Right. So I think people care about the Foxy Brown brand, whether it be controversial, whether it be negative or positive. They care about what I'm doing, what I'm wearing, what I, who I'm seeing, whether or not I have a record out or not. It was later established that she suffered from sudden and severe sensory neuro hearing loss. The rare disease only affects 1 in 10,000 and is mainly caused by a viral infection. I know God is working on me. I'm on a personal journey. I believe God wants to be the only voice I hear right now. I know I'll be alright. Thinking it was a temporary situation, Brown soldiered on wearing a hearing aid and requiring an assistant to tap out beats on her shoulder when recording. Unfortunately, despite seemingly her best efforts, her songs just didn't sound the same and were often overly loud. It actually got to a point where others in the studio were complaining about the level of noise despite her asking them to turn it up. She eventually decided to have surgery to get her hearing restored. The operation was partially successful, but she had only recovered about 20% of her hearing and was partially deaf for the next year. Thank you all for coming and showing your support. In May 2005, my life was altered drastically. 
But I've discovered in your darkest hour, the confusion that shrouds your daily existence can become overwhelming. During the recording of my new album, Black Roses, I was diagnosed with sudden severe hearing loss. Unfortunately, rumors began to swirl that Jay-Z was disappointed with Foxy's slow progress on the album and that he was planning to release her from the label. The rumors intensified when she was interviewed in November of 2006 by Power 105.1's Egypt and Ashi. After dodging multiple questions about the rumors and consistently insisting that she was still signed to Jay, without any further elaboration, the former rap queen had an outburst at the interviewers. See, what people don't know is that I initiated leaving Def Jam. They didn't drop me. They could never drop me. I'm a multi-platinum artist. Egypt then tried to turn the subject matter in which Foxy Brown assaulted a couple of ladies in a nail salon after she refused to pay. She dodged the question by saying, I am not getting into what took place in the nail salon because it was an unfortunate incident that I learned from. For those of you that don't know, Foxy Brown became angry during a visit to the nail salon after being told the establishment was going to close before she received her manicure. She became infuriated, so she punched, kicked, and bruised two employees at the nail salon. This situation was so serious that Foxy had to appear in court to address the incident where she pleaded guilty and was given three years probation and was ordered to take anger management classes. Brown, who rejected a plea deal, is facing misdemeanor charges of assault, attempted assault, and harassment. According to the two alleged victims, Myung Yi and Sung Ji Song, Brown began to physically assault them on August 27, 2004, after she got a pedicure. I can see why Foxy didn't want to talk about this, but Egypt kept firing back at Foxy during the interview. According to him, he wanted to give her an opportunity to set the record straight and clear the air to share her side of the story. He then made the mistake of telling her that she had to admit that people said she was hard to work with and she had an attitude. I'm not answering you. You are disrespectful. I told you when I called you what type of questions I wanted for my interview. The interview then got out of hand and Egypt then got disrespectful and asked Foxy Brown to leave the studio. Around this time period, it was confirmed that Foxy Brown was leaving Def Jam and for the second time her planned fourth album was shelved. Instead, she signed a distribution deal with Koch Records to launch her own brand titled Black Rose Entertainment and signed herself as her first artist. She announced that her first release would be a mixtape titled Brooklyn's Don Diva, followed by Black Roses, which was planned for the following year. Foxy Brown's back. Brooklyn's Dawn Diva. The incredible new album featuring Bulletproof Love and Star Cry. New Foxy Brown album available Tuesday, May 13th. Fucking with Brown Fox and Pam Pops. Yeah, I'm on it however you bitches want it. Wow, bitches is boring. I have always been a symbol of independence as a female in music. My brand is already established, millions of records have already been sold, and I have a fan base already loyal. After 13 years at Def Jam, I felt it was time as a matured businesswoman to move on and continue my brand under the roof of something I own. I have two albums of music recorded and my fans have waited long enough. I'm back, bitches. And fortunately for Foxy, she was not back. And before she could release any kind of music, she was imprisoned for violation of her probation. Now, you're probably thinking, what probation? We spoke about the nail salon incident just now, but, oh, but there's way more. But she's got one hell of a rap sheet, so we'll break it down into bite-sized chunks on a timeline. Around 1997, at the age of 17, she received her first sentence for assault after she spat on two hotel workers because they didn't have an iron for her to use. She received a 30-day suspended sentence and 80 hours of community service. Around the year 2000, she had her second interaction with the law after she crashed her Range Rover in Brooklyn and was arrested for driving on a suspended license. In addition to this, although not quite law related, she checked herself into a rehab facility because she had reached a stage where she could not live, write, perform or make music without resorting to opioids. Now around 2001, although she was not arrested in connection with this, a shooting took place this year that supposedly stemmed from her long-standing feud with Lil' Kim. But don't worry, we'll get to that in a minute. 
around 2002, she was arrested in Jamaica for an unspecified altercation with a policewoman at an airport. She didn't show up for her court appearance. In 2004, the nail salon incident happened, and in 2005, she had a rumored physical altercation with Jackie O. But we'll talk about that a bit later. Long as I got confirmation, I was with, so I dropped that bitch. In December of the same year, she appeared in court over the fight at the salon, where she stuck her tongue out at the judge and was handcuffed to the bench as a result. While the court officer was securing the handcuffs, she hit him and refused to apologize until she was threatened with 30 days in prison for contempt. Around 2007, Foxy got into it again in a beauty supply store in Florida. While putting makeup on in a bathroom, a store employee asked her to leave because the store was closing. After this, she lost her temper, threw hair glue at him, and spat on him after he called 911. She also attacked the police officer when he came to arrest her and spent the night in jail. After failing to show up for her court hearing, a warrant was issued for her arrest. In March, she pleaded guilty to violating her probation by leaving New York without permission and giving a police officer false information after she was pulled over in New Jersey. After this, her probation period was extended by six months. In that same year, she was jumped by three women who were friends with her ex, a man she dumped after she found out he was a pimp. Apparently, Foxy Brown got beaten very badly, lost some hair, they tore out her hearing aid, and she was ultimately in a complete mess. Foxy Brown's then ex-boyfriend was charged with assault. However, after a while, Foxy Brown claimed the assault never happened. Now, after all of these heavy run-ins with the law, she got into a minor altercation with her neighbor because her stereo was too loud. Foxy threw her blackberry at her neighbor a few days later, cutting her lip and chipping her tooth. This time, Foxy Brown actually attended her hearing and because she had multiple violations against her probation, she was sentenced to one year in prison. This is just a temporary situation. I made my bed and I have no problem lying in it. My will is steady. What doesn't kill me will only make me stronger. I realize that hard trials sometimes are necessary for truth to be established. And when a woman finds her truth, she becomes the difference. So when I came out, I said I'm going to be the difference. Unfortunately, staying in prison did not in any way make Foxy Brown more well-behaved and sensible. After barely a month after she got into prison, she got into another physical altercation, this time with a fellow inmate. The day after the incident, she got herself into even more trouble by being verbally abusive to the CO and refusing to take a random drug test. The result? 76 days in solitary confinement. After learning her lesson, she was released from confinement and good behavior after only about 40 days. Luckily, the rest of her stay was uneventful and she was released from prison on good behavior after only serving about 8 months. Now, immediately after leaving prison, Foxy dropped Brooklyn's Don Diva through Black Rose and Koch in an attempt to reignite her career. Fucking with Brown Fox and Pam Pops. Yeah, I'm on it, however you bitches wanted a way. Unfortunately, the album was a flop and only sold about 30,000 copies overall. This was probably one of the lowest points in Foxy Brown's career. Barely two years later, she was again arrested over the incident with her neighbor. The neighbor had taken out an order of protection against Foxy. Foxy Brown had allegedly gone over to her neighbor's property, lurked around near the windows, and allegedly exposed herself to the neighbor upon being discovered. Now luckily for Foxy, she was released on bail after paying $5,000 and pleading not guilty, and days later the charges were dropped. <laughs> No, I got a flashlight. Okay. 
it. Isn't it the same dress? Looks like you're trying to hide a bone close to the eye. Is that the same sweater dress? No. Her version of events were completely different than the one taken to court. I was on my way to rehearsal with my band and I was leaving my mom's house in Park Slope where I always go. That's the home that I was born in. And the police came and they saw the situation and there wasn't any conflict or discord. They were really baffled. But a supervisor came and saw the potential for publicity. If my name was Keisha Brown and not Foxy Brown, I would have been let go. Luckily, for the most part, Foxy Brown managed to stay out of trouble after this and since dipped out of the spotlight. Although she is worth an impressive 3 million dollars, she has not released an album since 2001's Broken Silence. Over the years, she has engaged in a shocking number of beefs, from Eve to Queen Latifah and many more. Now that's it for part 1 of what happened to Foxy Brown, part 2 will drop in a couple of days so look out for that. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Foxy Brown in your opinion? Let me know down below. Also add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace.